Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 37 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. I'd like to start this video by showing you the XNote Stopwatch Results window as seen at the end of video number 36 and explaining those results to you. Compared to the previous test at 7.49 seconds, uh, this does look to be an impressive gain. I have actually reduced my overall elapsed time by one and three quarter seconds, which is uh, a 23 percent gain in efficiency. Now I explained the uh, purpose of each column in the previous video, but I'll briefly go over that again for anyone who hadn't seen those videos. The first column, the N column, uh, represents the number of each uh, switch closing to make contact. And uh, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There were six contacts made, and each one of those represents one timing portion of the overall time and so we have uh, 0.68 at the first, 1.63 at the second, 2.61 at the third, 3.71 at the fourth, and 4.61 seconds at the fifth, and at the final uh, mark we have 5.74 seconds which was the total elapsed time. So each one of those figures represents a portion of the total elapsed time. Okay, and the uh, third column of the percentage figure uh, is the same thing, but shown, represented in a percentage format. So the final, of course, would be 100%. Now the next column would be the gap. Now the gap column is very critical information needed uh, in these tests and uh, I'd, I'd say it's the most important information and here's why. Each uh, portion of the overall time test, uh, as I say, was divided into six groupings and these represented the six groupings of the magnets on the wheel. Okay, now each gap shown here will uh, tell me exactly how long it took to go through a magnet section or a magnet grouping. Remember that there are six magnets in a group and six groups on the wheel. So each gap readout shows me how long it took to go through a section. Now the first section took 0.68 seconds. The second section took 0.95 seconds. So this tells me that the first section uh, progressed very quickly and then we had a slight slowing in the second section. Okay. Now, it's uh, expected by me that we would proceed quicker in the first section. And the reason for this is because uh, the, the two magnets at the lead-in end are, have a very strong attraction to the stator. And so they're pulled in towards the stator very quickly. And there's nothing to... Um, to give us a reverse uh, attraction uh, because all we have is wood on the flywheel before that. See? Now at the second section, uh, when we start to be drawn into the, to the next two magnets of the, of the next section, uh, we'll have uh, a strong attraction again. However, there will also still be a remaining attraction uh, to the magnets that we've already passed, you see. And so the uh, attraction, even though it is strong, 
again at the second at the beginning of the second group it uh, won't be as strong as it was at the first all right and that's why we have a longer uh, elapsed time through that particular grouping and you'll see that at the third group uh, the time is almost identical to that of the second group uh, it's only three one hundredths of a second difference and uh, at the fourth again the uh, time has the elapsed time has uh, increased to one and ten one hundredths of a second and uh, this is a very slight increase which shows me that the rotor hasn't slowed down hard, hardly at all. Now it's interesting to me to note that the uh, elapsed time through the fifth group was uh, faster than through the fourth, third, or even the second group. Uh, that, that's quite interesting to note. Uh, so what we have shown here is that there is actually a acceleration of the rotor going through the group. Um, it may be slight, uh, but it is an acceleration. Now the last group, the final group, we have a reading of 1.13 1 or 1 and 1, 1 and 13 hundredths of a second. And uh, this is slightly longer than the readout shown in the fourth group of one and ten one hundred seconds. So uh, it appears that as we get to the last group of a test, we're, we're going to have a slowdown. And um, this is probably due to the factor that we've reached the end of the plates, the end of the magnet layouts where we come to that uh, abrupt stop and uh, that, that's why we're getting a very strong reattraction there which, uh, which does have a slowing effect. So the results do look very encouraging and um, I, I believe that uh, we could certainly add more uh, plates to the flywheel and magnet sections and uh, it looks like we're hardly getting any slowdown what, whatever, maybe a slight slowdown, or it could even be uh, an acceleration. Uh, it's hard to say at this point. Uh, but overall, uh, we have done much better than in the previous tests, and I'm very happy with that. Now, um, as we do add more sections on, uh, one would expect that the wheel is going to slow down. However, that may not be the case. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to, to see what happens when we do add in more sections of uh, metal plates and uh, rotor magnets to the flywheel. I think that the tests of the X-Node stopwatch proved uh, very beneficial to my testing techniques and uh, we can see the results here. I can import these results into my uh, database so I can keep track of each test. Now I will be doing some comparison tests uh, to, uh, to further watch and see what happens uh, as a result of uh, maybe four or five additional tests with this uh, same rotor magnet layout so that I can see if there is uh, much of a difference uh, between each test. There shouldn't be a, a very wide difference because we're starting out now at a precisely the same location and uh, the, the test uh, removes all human factors of uh, error and so I would guess that we'd be at least within one-tenth of a second uh, in the results for each test that I take. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. And this is Rick Off signing out. Until next time.